Welcome to the Queer Conversation podcast brought to you by Lotol Media, a show where we discuss all things queer. I am your host, Silke Bader, a publisher and producer in the LGBTQI space in Australia for the past 30 years. In today's Queer Conversation, we meet Erica Felton, a director, producer, actor, and proudly queer woman who treasures stories that normalize everyday queer characters in a world that we know and love. Stories that make you remember small moments that you didn't think were still accessible deep within your brain, lost in the flurry of important life things. Erica was born in Australia, raised in China, and did a brief stint in the UK before settling in Sydney. Her latest short film, Cusp, is a love letter to the goodbyes you never got to have, saying farewell to the friendships of before with the hindsight of now. Your background is in, I believe, in film. Like you've done a lot of um, vlogging and um, also like a, a little doco. You, you've done a couple of other short films. Yeah. And is that your first queer short film that you've done? So I actually, I started as a child actor when I was a, a very little um, and then I went into um, YouTube vlogging when I moved to China as a teenager. It was a way to you know keep myself creative. Um, but then my first release, so I went to film school and my first released short was a documentary um, which was about different age uh, brackets and what they were most afraid of and it was just a way to explore um, people and what makes them tick. Um, and then I'd made other shorts throughout film school um, that are all in varying stages of development, but then Cusp was something that kind of fell out of me mid-COVID. Um, and it just, yeah. This is your first queer-themed film? Is that It's right? my first released queer-themed film, but everything that I made in film school was uh, queer-centred. I think I'm really passionate about having... Um, baked in queer characters, characters that just happen to be queer, that the story doesn't have to revolve around them being queer. I think that's really important to see and have representation on screen of, um, of people that their lives don't revolve around being queer. It's, it's just the fact that they are and they exist. Mm. So because it's a short film, mm. we can't talk too much about the film because you would reveal <laughs> everything. Spoil the whole thing. <laughs> that's right, and we don't want this. But... What was interesting reading up about um, your your passion about filmmaking as well is that you are interested in the little things in life that kind of um, sparks of an idea for you to be creative. I think so much of I mean cusp, but also just how I how I like to make work is based off of little inciting incidents. So this was actually set and based on and devoted to three women in my life that I have known. Um, from as young as you know, 13, um, and the varying instances where I've had to say goodbye to them because I moved around so much as a, as a young lass. Um, and it, I think it's something as simple as um, my very good friend Stella and I were sitting at the end of her goodbye party. I'd already left the country twice by this point, but she was moving off for university, and the whole party had left, um, and it was just us on a couch listening to music at 4 a.m., holding each other because we, were, we just knew this was going to be the end of one of our chapters together. Um, and I think those little tiny inciting incidents are um, where I like to find my creativity and where I want to tell stories. Um, it's small things. It's as simple as, you know, you go outside and you hear someone playing an instrument in their house. It's just you feel like you're in parts of other people's lives and um, getting to put your toe into um, someone else's world. I think that's really something I'm really passionate and about. Next mm. time it will screen is in St Kilda, at yes. the St Kilda uh, Film Festival. Yeah. That's on the 11th of June, is that right? It is, it is. It's really on my birthday, funnily enough. Oh, so wow. So great, great birthday present being on that, um, that panel, yeah. You are now also on the board of Queer Screen, is that right? Yeah, I've been on the so board since 2020. Oh, wow. That's, well, that's quite some time yeah. for being on the board. Yeah. And one thing that I was really interested in talking mm. to you about, you looked after the, the pitch, pitch at one off, stage. Yeah. Or you're, you're, doing, you're still doing it. I'm not yeah. sure. Yep. Can you give young filmmakers some tips here about yeah. what they should be looking out for? I think um, originality, something fresh, something new. I think we're really passionate about young queer voices, um, both in Pitch Off, which is for shorts, but also the Completion Fund, which is for often first-time features. Um, we're just, yeah, really passionate about seeing um, new stories, new people, new voices, something um, snappy. I think particularly in Pitch Off, 
the shorts, you know, you don't have to go on for 12, 20, 12 to 20 minutes. You can go as short as four, six. Something that really punches you and gets you going, I think, is really, um, really, it really excites us when we see those come through the um, submissions. So that funding scheme mm. um, by Viosquin, how does that work? Because you've got a few different ones, don't you? You've got a completion? Yeah, completion fund, fund and the pitch-off. So pitch-off, um, both have external judges, um, I, myself and my fantastic counterpart, Mike. Um, we help facilitate those judges, but they're industry professionals um, who come in with pitch-off. We receive um, you know, many, many, many submissions, and then we cull them down into a sort of a top five um, and then they go on to do a live pitching session opposite three industry professionals um, and then they pick on the day after a two, it's a two to five minute pitch I believe um, and then they have to do it live and it's all about it's a lot of it is working on your pitching skills it's really difficult to do um, whereas completion fund is we see full packages um, rough cuts um, budgets, the full works, and then again, um, some judges will come in and um, allocate um, up to, I think the last one was up to $20,000 um, mm. to help finish off the edit or get marketing material going. Um, it's just a really great way to help push particularly first and, and new features forward. Going back to your short, yeah. are you happy so far with the feedback that you received? It's been really interesting to me hearing the feedback on the film um, because it is the relationship of the two main characters is so ambiguous. Um, they're friends. Have they dated before? What's their life been like? They've known each other for decades, um, and it, it's been really fascinating hearing people, particularly people that I know, um, watching the f film through different viewpoints and putting their own spin on what exactly what's happened between them. Um, be it that they're long lost lovers or um, friends that once dated or have they never dated at all. Um, it's I love that the film is not quite clean cut on what the exact situation has been between the, the characters. Okay, so you're making me very curious now. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way, that's yes. the whole idea about that's, it. Uh, yeah, promoting it. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Now, you've got also a very colourful past, very fun past, it seems, mm. or from the outside anyway. <laughs> yeah. um, you grew up in China. Yes. And, I mean... That would have been, you would have been such a standout. You're tall, you've got red hair. <laughs> yeah. It's like, um, how was that? It was amazing. I would not, I often say I would not change how I grew up for the world. I was very, very privileged. Um, my dad moved us over there um, for work. I moved when I was 13. Um, so I really had all my formative teenage years um, in an international school with, you know, over 45 different countries represented around me. So you just, you get to know so many different kinds of people. Um, China was a whirlwind. When we moved, it, we went to we moved to Nanjing, which is about 300 k's west of Shanghai. So when we moved, there was not very many foreigners, not very much English spoken, um, but we loved it. It was just, you could, just growing up in that environment was really special. And you're right, I think I could not leave the house without getting stopped uh, for a photograph, which felt so <laughs> bizarre. Um, I've held many strangers' babies um, for photographs. It's just so lovely. And meeting these people, and as my Mandarin got better, um, you know, trying to have conversations with people. Um, yeah, I, it was just the most fantastic way to grow up. I, I was really curious to talk to you about that because mm. I guess um, for most people here, all we hear about China is through the news, which yeah. is not very good. Yeah. And um, it's, it's, I always wondered what it was like for somebody to actually you know, live there yeah. as a Westerners and to experience the, the culture differently than just going there on a holiday or... Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's wonderful. The country is beautiful. Um, it's just, yeah, I think I only have positive things to say. It's just it's such a fantastic place to Would you up. easily go back? I, I think I would happily go back. Um, look, maybe, maybe not to live at this point because I spent so long there, um, but... I often think about when, when the next time I'll be able to go back is. I actually, there was a film that I made um, about the town that I grew up in um, called This Is Nanjing, and I got flown out to Beijing to go to a film festival where it played. Um, and it was really surreal having made this film about this town that I so dearly loved um, and being able to go back over to China to watch it and play it amongst... Um, it was for the Foreigners on China film competition, and it was... Just fantastic, just to be around other filmmakers. That would be, I mean, that's that would be. There's an incredible, um, if you can call it, so competitive edge against. You mentioned before when you pitch, right? You need to have something unique yeah. and special. And 
you having lived in China, yeah. that is something that is really unique and special. Not many Western filmmaker have that experience. Yeah, it was. It was really. I found it really hard making that film, that documentary, because. I spent five years there. My family spent eight years there, um, and I'd go back a lot. And I actually made it um, two years after I'd left. I came back for a, for Christmas or something, um, and went around and shot the film with with an old school friend of mine who happened to be there at the same time. Um, and I found it really hard trying to articulate your love for somewhere when it was your home. It's it's not just trying to showcase somewhere I went on a holiday. It's how do you how do you get all of those little tiny things that make up a home. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's one of my favourite things I've ever made. I think it really captures what I think mm. of when I think of Nanjing. Did you experience queer life in China? I don't think I did purely because I think I came out when I was 16, but only to my best friend. Um, and I don't think... I mean, I left China when I was, when I was 18. I moved to London. Um, and I think that's when my... my queer life really began because I could be fully myself um, and fully me because I wasn't out to a lot of people when I was a teenager. Um, but so, yeah, no, not particularly in China. But after that, <laughs> full scene ahead. What's what's next on the horizon for you? Great question. <laughs> Great question. <laughs> at the end. Yes. Um, I've got a few things in development. Um, <clears throat> I'm actually working um, on an animated kids television show, um, funnily enough, a bit left of centre. Um, but I'm also working on a um, queer romantic comedy feature, which I'm hoping to get off the ground. Um, yeah, all set in Sydney. Um, so we're just things ticking in the background. Yeah. OK. So if anybody wants to see Cusp. Yes. One date is the 11th of June yes. at St Kilda Film Festival. Yep. Any other ways to be able to see it when, if you're um, not in Melbourne? I think, yeah, so St Kilda Film Festival, June 11th at 2 pm. Um, otherwise, follow Cusp Film on Instagram. All of our announcements go up there. Um, or they can follow me, Redhead Abroad. Um, um, we put all of our updates up there, and hopefully, we'll have some more announcements on the way soon. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure me. talking to you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you would like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. To catch all the latest from us, you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, or Facebook using the tag at Lottle Media, or head over to our website, lotl.com. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.